magic in your backyard. Go and find it! We'll head around to all the towns, head away all the day. South Aussie with cars is on, sit down. South Aussie with cars Road trip holidays in South Australia absolutely rock. And SA Tourism have identified the five best touring routes around South Australia. Check out this website right here, because that's where you'll find them. It tells you where to go and what to see. Best of all, you sit in your recliner chair and I'll take you on one of them called the Seafood Frontier. You do nothing, I'll do all the work and I'll inspire you to do a road trip around South Australia. But we're doing this one a little differently. Camper trailer holidays are on the rise so quickly. So we've come to the northern suburbs, out here to Parra Hills West, to a place called Eagle Trailers. These guys have loads of different options when it comes to camper trailers. So I thought, we'll grab a couple of camper trailers and go see what all the fuss is about. Road trip holidays in SA are one of the fastest growing holiday options and it's pretty easy to see why. Pack the car with some of your loved ones and choose your own adventure. Best of all, your job's made even easier because SA Tourism have mapped out five touring routes right here in South Australia. You can choose one that floats your boat and away you go. Now we're going to be doing the Seafood Frontier. It's a self-drive route to some of the tastiest seafood in the entire world. First off for us is the iconic Innes National Park. Venice National Park is located right on the southern tip of York Peninsula, so we're an easy three and a half, four hour drive from Adelaide, uh, easily accessible by a conventional vehicle, you don't have to have a four wheel drive to come here, and the park itself encompasses 9,500 hectares of remnant vegetation, so uh, most of the peninsula has been cleared of its natural vegetation for agriculture, so we're like a little island oasis for any of the native species that uh, habitat here. We have standard kangaroos and emus that you see across a lot of national parks. We've also got Tamar wallabies, mallee fowl, white-bellied seagulls, ospreys, the western whipbirds, a lot of rare and endangered species and vulnerable species, and this is their last place of refuge here. We're a popular destination for fishers and surfers alike, but also for nature lovers. It's a unique place and it has a great deal to offer everybody. Down at the bottom end here, you've got this spectacular coastline, good fishing, good surfing, good nature walks, you can have a good time in a lot of the surrounding towns, very relaxing and easy going lifestyle. It's quite a spectacular and stunning coastline and as you can see we've got a fair swell running today which enhances it even more. Some people may think it's hard to get to and it's certainly not, it's an easy drive from Adelaide, there's a lot of towns to go through on the way that you can stop and have a break, easily accessible by a two wheel drive vehicle. So annually we get roughly about 120 to 140,000 visitors a year come through the park. It's special to a lot of people because a lot of people have been coming here for many years to enjoy the scenery, the surfing, you know, the beaches are spectacular, the fishing is great and uh, a lot of repeat visitation but a lot of new visitors and a lot of interstate visitors come down here to enjoy the place. The camping options, we've got uh, approximately about 100 sites within the park scattered across about eight campgrounds as well as some heritage accommodation available for rent. To book a campsite here, you just go online, you can do it at home before you come. You visit parks.sa.gov.au and then you'll be able to pick which campsite you want to stay at or which accommodation, book it before you come and it'll be here waiting for you when you arrive. It's a great way of booking a campsite that you prefer. It takes the pressure off when you arrive. You don't have to rush around and try and find a campsite. You know you've got one here or your favourite campsite if you've managed to book that one. You've got one here waiting for you and you can arrive at any time and set up. South Aussie with Carsey. South Aussie with Carsey. Bring back the great South Australian road trip. If you haven't done one in a while, then this episode's designed to remind you just how good road trips in South Australia are. SA Tourism have identified five touring routes around this great state, and we're doing one called the Seafood Frontier. That covers everywhere from York to Air Peninsula. And we're doing it in camper trailers. Mark tells us why Innes National Park is such a good spot for a camper trailer holiday. 
a lot of our campgrounds are set up to accommodate camper trailers um, and when you book your campsite it'll tell you whether the site you're actually booking will suit a camper trailer. They're big and roomy and spacious for the, for the camper trailers. The campgrounds have plenty of amenities in them and uh, perfect for that, that camper trailer holiday for the family and kids. Camper trailers are easy. So you can uh, pop them on the back of the car on the Friday night and head on out to where you want to go and just open her up when you get there. It's easy, fully off-road capable, just simple to use. 20 or 30 years ago, the campers used to be hard to set up. They used to be in cumbersome, but nowadays they're fairly light and easy to manoeuvre around and easy to set up. I find that it's, it's just so much easier than taking a caravan away. It's just hooking it up and just getting to where you want to go and then set up in five minutes and have a beer. The Chinook, this is our base starting model. For me, the best thing about this one is the setup time. It only takes approximately five minutes to set up. You can just pull up in the spot you need to get to and then just quickly open her up, extend the poles and that's it. This one has a full kitchen, so it has a full burner stove. Also has a sink with an automatic pump on your tap. This is a two berth camper, but it also has a lounge area. The Chinook also has a fridge slide in the front box and also has uh, gas hard plumbed as well. Uh, we're one of the only companies that I know of that actually provides hard plumb gas to the stoves with quick connections. The best thing about camping here at Innes National Park is that our camper trailer is located there. That's where we're sleeping tonight. And it opens up into this. We are so close to the beach. But best of all, wait till you hear the price and I'll say it in advance. That's a bargain. To stay here, it's a one-off entry fee, which is $10 per night and then $11 per night to camp. For a family of four, that equates to roughly about $5 each person per night. Camper trailer holidays are a great way of uh, camping here in the park. You're back in touch with nature. You're off the ground, so if anything like snakes and that bother you, well, they're certainly not going to get in your camper trailer. But, uh, yeah, it does put you back in, in with nature uh, and gives you that feeling that you're actually camping outdoors. Camper trailer holidays are fantastic and there's two key messages I reckon. Number one, once you've got a camper trailer, you don't have to pay for hotel rooms or caravan parks ever again. You can stay somewhere like here at Innes National Park. I mean, have a look at the scenery. You're talking 10 bucks to get in here plus $11 a night. For a family of four, it's like $5 a head super cheap. Secondly, I reckon people underestimate the size. This is a six berth. Uh, two bunks there, two people here, plus two kids here. So it holds a lot of people. We're a family, say, you know, we might bring a couple of the kids, but you could also have another couple sleeping here as well. Intimate, cosy, but that's what holidays are all about. If you're in the market for a camper trailer, get in touch with Eagle Trailers out there on May North Road in Power Hills West. They've got a massive showroom and there's a camper trailer to suit every single budget. Eagle Trailers also have their own workshop so they can help you out with any issues you've got with your existing camper trailer. Camping in the wild in Innes National Park isn't your thing. You can always stay at the Marion Bay Caravan Park. This place is a cracker and it's right on the doorstep of the National Park, which makes for easy exploring day trips. They've got everything from unpowered sites for the tents or camper trailers to seaside cabins. The best thing about this place has got to be the location. These cabins are located so close to the... Beach! You betcha. I'll show you exactly how close we are to the beach. Come with me, ready? One step. Come on kids, come on kids. Nine. 23, 24, 37, 38. 
152, and ladies and gentlemen, you are at the beach. Yeah, at the beach! Opals that shine bright and less You're so beautiful. Hang around, South Aussies, because straight after the break, we take the seafood frontier touring route from York Peninsula via Port Augusta all the way to Air Peninsula. We'll catch you then. South Aussie with Cosby. South Aussie with Cosby. Welcome back, folks. I'm getting super pumped about road trips here in South Australia. I used to do them all the time as a kid. One of the best forms of holidays that you can do. The one that I'm showing you now is the Seafood Frontier Touring Route, which takes in York Peninsula, Air Peninsula, all the way to the Western Australian border. It's an absolute belter, so let's go and have a look. We've checked out the bottom of York's, now it's northbound for us. Wallaroo is a cracking seaside destination on the seafood frontier. There's loads to do for everyone of all ages. First time we've been up to Wallaroo and um, really enjoyed the drive up. When we got here, I was really impressed with, with just what Wallaroo has to offer. Yeah, it's very um, tranquil, very relaxing. Actually, nice fresh breezes and lots to see. And sticking to the coast, the Moon to Mines historical train is a must do. You know, when I was a young fella, my parents used to bring me on this train probably twice a year, especially around Christmas. And it's so cool as an adult and a parent nowadays to bring my kids back here to do what I did as a child. Think about what you did with your parents. You know, where do you go on holidays? And that's what I'm saying here. Take the kids back there. It's so super rewarding. I mean, this is actually a little cold it, which is not actually ours, but you kind of get what I'm saying. Only a few kilometres from Moota, there's a free day out that's to be had at the Kadena Motocross Club, which runs for a high percentage of the weekends every single year, and it's well worth a look. The seafood frontier takes in hundreds of kilometres in South Australia and loads of awesome country towns. And along this touring route, you'll find hundreds of events every single year. Events in regional South Australia are well worth keeping an eye out for, especially this one. It's the Kernawek Lawenda held in the Copper Triangle on York Peninsula. It's held every second year and attracts 30,000 people. And you know, it's been going since the 1970s. In case you're wondering, Kernawek Lawenda, what does it mean? Cornish happiness. From here, my friends, we head north on the seafood frontier touring route, and I recommend a stop at Port Piri. Check out the RSL Museum. It's only a gold coin donation to get in, and it is simply amazing. From Piri, you go on to Port Augusta. Now, it's here where Mayor Sam Johnson tells us why this place is the perfect little town. The greatest thing about Port Augusta is we're the crossroads of Australia. So if you're heading north, east, south or west, you're going to come through Port Augusta. You want to go to Port Lincoln, you're going to pass this. You want to head to Perth, you want to go to Darwin. Likewise, those on the west that want to head over to Sydney, etc., you're going to drive through Port Augusta. And we see an enormous number of cars, as you can see in the bridge behind me, that are coming through, whether it be for work or for pleasure, family holidays, trucks, etc. But I always encourage people that if you are driving through, just add, even if it's only a couple of hours to your trip, just turn off of that main bridge, come in and have a look, just come down the foreshore. Let the kids out the car, come and have lunch, have a look around, go and have lunch at Wadalata Outback Centre, go and have lunch at the Arid Lands. If you love it that much, stay, there's plenty of accommodation choice. It doesn't add that much longer to the trip, you're already driving through. We took his advice and popped into the award-winning Wadalata Outback Centre. Wadalata is a major tourist attraction for the region. We've won six state tourism awards since we've been open. We were a bicentennial project opened in 1988 and we attract probably about 104,000 people a year.
South Australia is spoilt with some of the most beautiful coastline in the entire world. But you know you're a true South Australian when you rock up to a beach like this one with a massive expanse of beautiful white sand. You get down onto the beach and you look along the water and there you see somebody else about 800 metres up and you go, oh, there's somebody else here. That's how you know you're a South Australian. South Aussie with Cosby. South Aussie with Welcome back, folks. We're doing the Great South Australian Road Trip, which is actually nowadays made easier, all thanks to SA Tourism. Let me show you what I've done. Out of the way, so This thing here is basically an interactive way to travel. You choose where you want to go. They've identified five touring routes throughout South Australia. And we're doing the Seafood Frontier Touring Route and I've shown you the bottom of Yorks, Copper Triangle, Piri, Port Augusta and next stop for us is Wyala. And there's something that's super special here that you simply must see. These have got to be the friendliest dolphins in South Australia. Have a look at this. I'm not going to pat him but I'm going to show you just how close you can get to them. They're here at Wyala and they tell me they're here every day, not just one. There must be four or five or even six of them out here. This is very cool and folks, it's totally free. That's a bargain. We stayed at the Discovery Holiday Park at Wyala for sure and it's right at the seafront. In fact, you can actually walk out of your tent or your cabin, walk straight to the ocean and catch fish right out the front of Discovery Holiday Park at Wyala. But best of all for me is that it is so close to these dolphins. Discovery's Holiday Park at Wyala is like a kilometre that way. That's where we're staying. This has got to be one of the best things I've ever seen in South Australia. And I'm calling them the friendliest dolphins in the state. From Wyala, the seafood frontier touring route continues south all the way to Port Lincoln. Now I reckon Port Lincoln is one of the best playgrounds in South Australia with everything from four wheel driving through the sand dunes, you can go sandboarding, to doing something that you can only do in two places around the world. That's in South Africa and also here in Port Lincoln, South Australia. But what is it? What am I doing at the Port Lincoln Marina at 6.30 in the morning? Well, I'm doing something that's unique to Port Lincoln. It's the shark dive. Harry here's a local lad from Lincoln who's also a deckhand on the boat now, mate. What do you got there, buddy? Um, this is a jaw from a great white. So we come to Neptune Island to see these great whites. They sort of come here in an abundance because of the New Zealand fur seals here. Yep. So yeah, we just drop our cage in and put six divers in there and it's such an amazing experience. Look, you can go to a beach and you never see a shark. You go fishing, you never see a shark. But... Which is probably ideal, let's be honest. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. The Seafood Frontier Touring Route takes in some of the best fishing areas that South Australia has. So if you're going to go on this road trip, then it goes without saying that you've got to get out and do some fishing. For our fishing expedition on the Seafood Frontier Touring Route, we headed west from Port Lincoln to a little town called Coffin Bay. Coffin Bay, famous for its oysters and its fishing. We're going to check out the fishing. Thirty, be nice. <laughs> oh, so it's a little snappy. But he's undersized. While we're in Coffin Bay fishing, I thought I'd show you the oldest fishing trick in the book. Do it on one of your mates. It's such good value. The old tap the rod so they think they're getting bites. Are you getting bites? Yeah. 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 Teasing the hell out of them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the oldest trick in the book. <laughs> Living in South Australia is super cool. It's pretty amazing to think that probably no matter where you are right now, you could pick the kids up early from school on a Friday 
and be here at the bottom of York Peninsula for a sunset taking in this. And that's what this state is so, so, so good at. Road trips are great. So if you're looking for a pre-planned route, we've got you covered. Take a look at the Seafood Frontier itinerary and hit the road for an easy to follow touring route. It has an area map, a list of places to eat and stay, and of course, all the things there are to do. Plus, best of all, there's five to choose from. The Seafood Frontier touring route has officially been conquered. Wasn't it something else? I want to urge you all to get out and explore regional South Australia. Do a road trip because I worry that our lives are just disappearing before our very eyes. We work 24 seven and we always just put work above enjoying your own life. And before you know it, your life's actually run out. So my advice is simple. Grab a fistful of people that you like or you love, chuck them in a car, fill it up with fuel, and do a road trip in SA. Come through an area like this. Remember, you can stay here for $11 a night. That is unbelievable. So hopefully I've inspired you to explore regional South Australia. I know it's a good thing. I'll catch you on the road somewhere. Catch the road in South Australia. <laughs> in South Australia, we will go head away, holiday. And we also have a, a massive, what, let's see here, Adelaide Crows fan. We've got a bit of a surprise for you kids. Do you like Taylor Walker? Yeah. He's coming to dinner. Just joking, he's not really. <laughs> South Aussie with Cozzy is proudly brought to you by the South Australian Tourism Commission. South Aussie with Cozzy. I like possums. <laughs>